You might remember that a few months ago, we made a video discussing former Prime Minister David Cameron's links to Greensill and the lobbying that he conducted for them. Well, the story re-entered the news yesterday when a Panorama investigation discovered that Cameron had earned £10 million from the finance company before it collapsed. So let's discuss Cameron's involvements, his profits and the controversy right now. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. Greensill Capital are a finance company, specialising in the pretty financy world of supply chain capital. Now, it's not super important to understand how this works for this video, but what is important is that former Prime Minister David Cameron was very involved in their business. In fact, when the pandemic first began, Greensill wanted to be part of the government's COVID corporate financing facility, or CCFF. However, they were rejected. Keen to still be involved in the CCFF, Greensill reached out to David Cameron, who'd been a paid advisor for them since 2018, and they got Cameron to do some lobbying for them, with the former Prime Minister reaching out to Chancellor Rishi Sunak and encouraging him to reconsider the decision about the CCFF, as well as Cameron reaching out to two other junior Treasury advisors. Sunak responded, saying he'd push the Treasury to explore an alternative, something that, unfortunately for Cameron, they didn't do. Not long after, the company collapsed altogether, leaving Cameron's stock options worthless and the company dead. Now, this was controversial in itself when it first emerged earlier this year, a former Prime Minister reaching out to the Chancellor asking for a favour in order to protect his stock options, which were set to be worth about £60 million. Cameron has since been cleared of any wrongdoing. However, the MPs who cleared him did remark that Cameron demonstrated a significant lack of judgement. Anyway, that's the scandal from earlier this year. A possibly overly cosy relationship that allowed a failing business to buy access to ministers during a pandemic when millions were struggling. But what's the latest turn of events? Well, a Panorama investigation found that Cameron earned more than £10 million from the work he did with Greensill over just two and a half years, including a £3.3 million lump sum just before the company went under. This money is made yet more questionable when we turn to Panorama's discoveries about the GFG Alliance, a group of companies which employs 35,000 people, including 4,000 in UK steel mills. Internal documents revealed that Greensill knew that GFG were in financial trouble and they'd be unable to repay their Greensill loans. In order to cover this up and not alert investors, Greensill used its money to cover GFG's repayments. In April 2020, a senior manager confirmed by email that these payments had been going on for four months, saying that the company were constantly plugging holes that GFG cannot afford to repay. They were clearly keen to continue covering for GFG, so instead of flagging the issue, they looked for a new investor to cover the costs. And where did they turn? Well, you guessed it, the UK government. And who could make that happen? Right again. David Cameron, who sent 56 messages to ministers and senior civil servants asking the Bank of England to invest £10 million of taxpayer money into the company's loans. The Bank of England rejected them, but they were accepted into the government's Coronavirus Large Business Interruption Loan Scheme, allowing Greensill to make loans backed by an 80% taxpayer guarantee. However, the terms only allow Greensill to lend up to £50 million to each company in the scheme. So to recap, Greensill's client GFG weren't able to repay their loans and Greensill were covering the cost for them. Greensill had been allowed to issue government-backed loans, and these loans can be worth up to £50 million. You see where this is going? Greensill lent their struggling compatriot £50 million using the government scheme, meaning that it was backed by a £40 million taxpayer guarantee. But it gets better, because GFG needed more than £50 million, so Greensill gave them another loan, and then another, and another, and another, and another, and another, and another. And just for luck, an eighth to a company closely associated with them. All in all, it's either seven or eight times more than £50 million allowed, 
Let's say that it's 400 million. That's obviously huge, but it also means that the taxpayer is liable for 320 million pounds if the loans aren't repaid by GFG, which doesn't look likely. Currently, these loans are being investigated and the government's guarantee has been suspended. But according to many experts, the damage has already been done. So the headline story here might be Cameron's £10 million payout for trying to convince the government to back his failing company, but that's not even half of it. The business, helped by Cameron's lobbying, was attempting to use taxpayer money to stay afloat, something that the former Prime Minister was very motivated to do due to the risk of the company going under and his £60 million stock options losing all their value, which is eventually what happened. Now, Greensills say that they acted legally and following the advice of their lawyers, and Cameron's representatives say that he had no involvement in lending decisions nor any knowledge of GFG's finances. But you can see that it's not a good look. And you can also see why many people are upset that the former Prime Minister is profiting from and protecting big businesses. While at the same time, these businesses are allegedly exploiting taxpayer-backed loans. What do you think, though? Comment below your thoughts on the latest revelations and the scandal as a whole. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a new video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that is in the description.